Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Trainwreck. It's the latest film from director Judd Apatow. It stars Amy Schumer in a first starring role, who's also the writer of the film. And she's also from the star from the TV show that's on Comedy Central called Inside Amy Schumer. And she's also a stand-up comedian. But Bill Hader from Saturday Night Live and Superbad, as well as The Adventureland, Brie Larson, Tilda Sweeten, Tilda Sweeten, Colin Quinn, John Cena, Mike Bertolia, John Glaser, Missa Bayer, Isra Miller, LeBron James, the basketball player, with Evan Brickman, Cliff Mefford Man Smith, and cameo appearances here by Daniel Redcliffe, Matthew Broderick, Marissa Tomei, Chris Everett, and announcer Marf Albert. And it's directed by Judd Apatow. The movie begins focusing on two daughters. Amy and Kim Townsend and they both learn that their father Gordon is telling them that he and their mother are divorcing because monogamy isn't realistic. So 23 years later Amy, who is now played by Amy Schumer, at Wrigley gets drunk, stoned, parties and sleeps with many guys even though she's already dating a gym addicted uh, guy named Steven was played by John Cena. Amy works at a men magazine called Snuff, but she goes into a work meeting where her boss, Diana, was played by Tilden Sweden, asks for pitches for new articles. One of her co-workers, Randall Park, pitches an article about a sports doctor named Aaron Connors, who's played by Bill Hader. Amy suddenly makes fun of the idea, saying that sports are stupid, but Diana thinks that Amy's take on the article will be the most interesting of them all and signs for the article to her despite the fact that she didn't want to do it in the first place. So Amy goes to her dad's house to help her sister Kim, who's played by Brie Larson, to pack the place up only to find out that Gordon has multiple sclerosis and wants up moving to an assisted living home. Kim is now married to Tom and has a stepson, Alistair, who completely annoys Amy. So Kimba sends her dad because he sleeps around, you know, since he's a racist and he was drunk, not to mention cheating on their mom. She thinks they can't afford a nice assisting living place in order to put him in. So, so Amy wants to make it work by visiting Gordon in the home and becomes very upset that she tells Kim that she flews away all of his med millibilia. So Amy goes to meet Aaron to set up for an interview schedule and that night she winds up going on a date with Steven which she became very upset that that she started drinking and their loud conversation gets them into a fight with all the other moviegoers. Yeah, you know, when they went to go see the movie The Dog Walker you know, that's starring Daniel Redcliffe from Harry Potter and Mercy till May. So Amy wants to go in outside just to smoke a joint. And when she came back, she, Stephen asked her who are all the other guys on her phone. And that's when they went outside and had a complete fight. And, you know, where Stephen felt very hurt, only to leave, leave her completely crushed because he claims that she's not a very nice person. So Amy winds up having a brunch with Kim, only to find out that she's pregnant. They go to Gordon to tell him, and he was thrilled that he was finally having a biological grandchild, which makes Kim very angry. Especially when Alistair is his grandchild, yep, and it almost leads Kim very furious. So then Amy once again interviews Aaron at his sports facility where she tests out a treadmill body image suit. Yeah, this is where she does all this other moves. 
And she started running until she received a text from Kim, only to find out that Gordon had to be moved to a cheaper facility. Amy actually slows down the treadmill and starts to have a full panic attack. So Aaron coaches her breathing and calms her down and suggests that they should go eat out. So then they, they start focusing on her writing. You know, she learns about his family and after some of the drinks they just get into the cab, leave, they go to his place and stayed over you know, just to sleep. Only that she broke a rule by staying the night. So the next day, Amy tells her co-worker, Nikki, who's played by Vanessa Bayer, about what happened. Aaron calls to ask if they can even see each other again. So Amy starts to panic and tells them that they might talk about it at the interview. So. But meanwhile, Aaron's friend, LeBron James, the basketball player, is excited for him since Aaron hasn't dated everyone in five years. So... Amy goes to watch Aaron perform surgery while listening to the song Uptown Girl by Billy Joe. Yeah, and that's where she started vomiting <laughs> right in front of him. She later gets a phone call that her dad had a fall. So Aaron drives her to the home where Aaron stitches her dad's cut and presses him with his sports knowledge. And since then, Aaron and Amy have begun dating and falling in love with each other. Yeah, and that's been going on a lot, you know, because then Amy wants up going with Aaron to a charity slam dunk contest that's hosted by LeBron when they started performing trampoline dunks with the Knicks City dancers performing. Yeah. <laughs> and then later, Aaron had wants up going with Amy to Kim's baby shower where they started making comments about what Aaron does and then how Amy sleeps around that unnerves him completely. And of course, they started getting all these uh, other stuff that they had to deal with, which I know Amy couldn't even stand being at the shower. So she, she started coming up with all these uh, gross out comments to Kim's friends. Yeah. So then she started apologizing for the shower, only to find out uh, that Kim tells her that Gordon has died. So once they went into the funeral, you know, Amy wants to have given a speech involving uh, for everybody to raise their hand if if your dad is had ever offended you and and if he's also one of your favorite people. So then, after that, she and Kim started to get into a fight, which Amy says that they didn't even like Gordon anyway. But Aaron tells her, you know, he loves her. Well, Amy just couldn't believe it because they just picked the worst time to say it. Yeah, which I know. <laughs> it, even worse, Diana told Amy that cutting the, the Aaron story had become completely boring. Yeah, and that had to happen right after Aaron had received a prestigious award at the luncheon. Yeah, and it leads to a bigger fight. Yeah, <laughs> all the way into the house. So then Amy returns to her old ways and goes drinking at a bar to her co-workers, yeah, including a six-year-old intern. Yeah, I know, that's when we find out what happened. And it gets even worse as Diane to fire her for, for the job. Aaron wants up moping all day at his apartment till LeBron calls him to tell him he's been hurt. And that's what gets to a, an intervention where you saw cameo appearances by Matthew Broderick, Chris Everett, and and announcer Mark Albert. Yeah, which I thought that was unnecessary. So then, just to talk more over, Amy starts to go through a lot of changes you know, after their fight. Yeah, and she told everything what just happened. So Amy wants to clear out all the booze that she's been drinking and decided to pitch her Aaron story to another magazine called Vanity Fair, which they published it. She sends the article to Aaron and she and he finally smiles. So then he performs successfully on Stoudemire since I know uh, he originally canceled the appointment after such a bad day. And then they finally uh, started the new game at the Madison Square Garden where 
Amy wants up um, trying to make it on time by trying to get to the subway real fast. And yeah, I know that was hard. And she ran as fast as she can. And once uh, the game was over, that's when Amy was attempt to uh, perform, which basically we see the Knicks City dancers performing front and center with her to all these other songs, including you know his favorite song, Uptown Girl. Amy tries to race and jump off on the trampoline to make a dunk and immediately uh, landed a, a face plant. Definitely did not make the basket. So Aaron rushes over, tells him that she's trying to show him that she, she can work hard and try. So they kiss and make up and, <laughs> and the movie ends. For a Judd Apatow film, this was actually pretty good. I mean, no way near as good as the 40-year-old version and and simply uh, knocked up, but I guess it's a start. I mean, has some great, um, uh, great characters. I mean, this is the first time Amy Schumer has ever did a film like this. Cause yeah, you know, and this is the first time she ever wrote a screenplay um, by uh, Judd Apatow. She's also the co-producer of the film as well. So to me, it just feels more like just an Amy Schumer film than simply a Judd Apatow movie. But it, it does have the humor towards it. And she was very good in this, you know. Almost seems similar to her uh, previous show that's on Comedy Central called Inside Amy Schumer. Because <laughs> she had a lot of dark stuff on that series. Yeah, already, you know, she comes up with a lot of topics and mostly involving sex, drugs, and all these other kinds. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't seen the show, I, I think you should check it out. Yeah. Bill Hader, you know, coming from Saturday Night Live and and Super Bad and all that, he was very good as playing the, the sports doctor Aaron Connors because, you know, you could tell considering his uh, nervousness and everything. <laughs> so he really does fall in love with Amy, and, and they had terrific chemistry together. Yeah, I mean, comparing to... Uh, John Cena's role in the film, yeah, which I gotta admit, this is a much better role for him compared to what he did in in all these Fred movies. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he started talking dirty when he was having sex with Amy in the film. Yeah, he played Steven, by the way, until he found out what just happened. <laughs> but I, I thought it was really funny, especially when they went into the movie theater and they were watching... Um, a film with uh, <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe and Marissa Tomei. Yeah, that, that was fun. And, um... <laughs> and uh, Colin Quinn was also very good, too. You know, playing the, the father, Gordon. Yeah, she, he came up with all this funny stuff. And, you know, he's basically what he is because he's a big fan of, of the Mets. And, you know, he's been going through a, a lot of crap. I mean, the fact that he's not really a great person to deal with since, you know, Amy and Kim has been dealing with this guy for such a long time. He's not a very nice person, but but that's what they have to deal with and all that. Um, but, yeah, Till in Sweden, you know, playing the boss of the film, yeah, she was okay. You know, she's just coming up with all these funny dialogues, and, I mean... This is sort of a, an engaging role compared to what she played in, in previous films, such as uh, the Narnia movies, you know, Constantine, and all these others. It's interesting that she plays a tough boss, you know, hiring uh, Amy to pitch the, the sports article for her, even though she didn't really want to do it in the first place. My only problem with the film, however, was that Considering it's running time, which is two hours, it does get a bit slow at times. I mean, yes, I mean, for all of his comedies, you know, they always like to throw in some dramas in there, trying to become more dramatic. And they started getting all these work celebrity cameos, which was kind of unnecessary, but considering that Aaron is working as a sports doctor, because he's a surgeon, not to mention because he's always going to all the basketball games that he supports, that yeah, you, you pretty much see all the the basketball stars and all these others. Now, I mean, 
I'm not really big on sports that much, too, and I have to admit, even though I did used to watch it back then, I gotta admit, uh, LeBron James wasn't that good in the movie, but especially with the conversation that he's been going for with, with Aaron, you know, they were like playing basketball with each other, you know, they're trying to get an appointment on something, and and that intervention scene was just sort of a setup too, because they knew this was going to go for for cameos like Matthew Brovick and announcer Mark Albert, even Chris Evans. Why, why are they? It's like every comedy I've seen, they always like to throw in celebrity cameos just for laughs, and sometimes they're just not that funny, you know. And I know there's like too many celebrity jokes too in the film. I mean, I, despite the dark humor they put into the stuff, that's pretty much what we're going to get. We're just going to get more celebrity jokes. Uh, and I've seen this a lot in comedies these days. I wish they just cut out with that and just focus on on some meat and potatoes of all the, the real dark stuff or, or maybe all this crap that's been going on you know, between Amy, her sister Kim, and their father because that's what the real story is all about it's just about them and their father you know how they've been going through for the past couple years now you know and the fact that they just couldn't handle this you know long before he passed away you know which I know the funeral had been basically what it was how, how everybody felt but otherwise um, that's what pretty much the film had to be yeah, it's it's a great film, great comedy, um, definitely recommend it. But just also to keep that in mind, um, when this movie came out afterwards, there was a shooting that happened in, in Lafayette, Louisiana, at the Grand Sixteen Theater where they were screening the movie. Which then we found out that a 59-year-old John Russell Hauser had committed suicide once he opened fire killing two people and injured nine others yeah and that was really one of the biggest tragedies that happened because that's been going on already with all these feeder shootings especially the aftermath of the showing of the dark Knight rises back in 2012 you know killing several people while the guy was disguised as the character from the film yeah it's very tragic and I know that's been going on I mean I, I know Schumer actually wrote on her Twitter account of, about that you know she prays um, for all the heartfelt and sympathies to the victims of the tragedy that happened in Louisiana how she felt more heartbroken by it because also Universal even released a statement as well yeah. Sad, you know. But other than that, um, despite of what's happened in the film, it's still worth watching. Um, I enjoy all the funny laughs that Amy had came up with, and it's definitely what it was—a comedy. Some great actors in the film that I like, and you know, it's it's fun. I enjoyed it. So anyway, I give Trainwreck four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.